All right, this is my third season covering the Bill. We're going into the third season. I have never covered another team other than my Dolphins this deep for this long, and it's been an interesting ride. Now, my original thesis when I first really started covering you guys was this run attack of the Bills was going to be critical to get this team to where it's got to go. Now, I don't, I don't take any pleasure in saying this, but I was dead on. Uh, and sadly for you guys, uh, Dable and Dorsey and McDermott have not figured that out. And I'm going to show today clearly what the problem is with the Bills and Allen, as most of you Bills fans know. But I'm going to dial it in very, very deep. And the good part for you guys, not so good for anybody who's playing you, is that the philosophical fix is the easiest thing to correct. And it can change everything on this team from the offense to the defense. But the the negative side to that is when the philosophy isn't right, it doesn't matter what's going on underneath. So all the all-world talent of Allen and the rest of the crew on the Bills is going to fall back into that quicksand unless this is resolved. And it's not to say that they got to be a run-heavy team. That's not what I'm saying. I'm pretty much almost saying the same thing that I'm saying about my Dolphins and many other teams. Casey showed us last year as they went to the championship with a hobbled Mahomes, that pass balance and having the option to run the football is the way of the new league. We had a run pretty much heavyish league all the way up, you know, till about the early to mid 2000s. Then they made the rule changes and uh, all like, you know, 10 all time records were broken over the course of two or three years. And it was fun ball for like a decade. But it slowly kind of got curtailed. And I've been saying for a couple of years now, I believe the league is making another secular, uh, secular change into a different style as the, I guess, most conducive style for an NFL team. It's still a passing league, but it is not just fun ball anymore. So the quicker that my Dolphins and your Bills figure this out, the better they're going to be. Now, I'm going to show you a whole series of stats to really dial this in. It's because I got my man Tommy over at Mafia Sports Report, who's like a brother to me. I love the guy. I can't believe I met him through uh, this whole shenanigans thing I do now. And we go back and forth for a couple years now. But I'm going to dial this in for you and him uh, because it is so clear. I'm on the outside. got no emotion. I'm not doing this to be negative. I like Alan a ton. I like so many of you guys a ton. I'm just trying to be a good football cover guy to give good information. And Diendo, I want to start out with this little uh, image here, uh, Next Gen Stats. This is about the uh, wild card game. Josh Allen faced a career high 47.8 pressure rate in the wild card round. The Dolphins and Bills each had 12 different players record a pressure. A pressure tying the next gen stats error record for most players with a pressure in a game 24 nearly one out of five and i want to use this as the informational uh foundation to play off that on a few different directions and to then bring it back home and crystallize it to show you guys it is so obvious what the problem is the fix is so easy on a philosophical level there has to be some talent additions. Bills are sort of poised for that, uh, but I'll get into that another day. But fan, Bills fans, if this gets resolved on both a philosophical and a talent level, you guys will be cooking with oil, although this AFC East is going to be brutal this year. Okay, so I want to say thanks for stopping by. I want to give you a shout-out and a shout-out to Ace Spread, my sponsor, because without the two of you, this show ain't going down. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right, so we saw that pressure rate, which was insane, okay? Now, here you can take a look at this image, and you can see Dolphins versus Bills, Josh Allen, 23 for 39, three TDs, two picks, 352. That's a good day. 
But when you take into account the pressure rate, and then you go down and you look, well, you know, they did run the football. They had 10 to uh, uh, Singletary at 4.8, 12 to uh, Cook for 3.5, uh, uh, 2.5, and Josh Allen only had four carries for 20. This looks like a really, really good day. I liked what they did, although when you dig into the rushing attack, the way they do is a lot of draws, and I've talked about that in the past, how it's not the best way to run the football, but I'll deal with that later. But when you look at the where Dorsey had called these passes or where Allen decided to go, I, I have to go into it, and you know, no one's really ever going to know, but, but when you see uh, this game, the wild card, and the conference game, you kind of got to say... Dorsey is the guy in charge. So the image right here, you can see three for eight for 106, 0 for one in the middle, one for two deep. That's a total of 11 deep plays, okay? And then, you know, you see the rest of the pass stats here. But I'm going to tie it in, that right there, with this image. Now, you can look at the passing. I'm going to come back to this again, but I quickly want to show you. The intended air yards, that red circle, the first red circle to the left, 15.6. All right, so this was fit. Allen was looking 15.6 yards on average for the play. That is astoundingly long. That's a lot of time to hold the football, and that correlates to the insane amount of pressure. And so, okay, you won the game. Uh, maybe this is just an anomaly. Well, let's keep going. So now you're in a snow game, okay? And what gets called? Here's this uh, little uh, uh, graphic here. See, Allen, again, high volume passing, even though it's snow. O touch, zero touchdowns, one pick. That ain't good. But 42 this week throws, 39 last week. This week is tons of snow. Allen, eight rushes uh, for 3.25, which is terrible for him. Cook, six. Jay, uh, Singletary, six. And Cook, five. And you see again here, you had nine deep plays over 20 yards, which is two less than what you had the week before, even though you had three less throws. And you're in the snow. And we'll go back to this image I just showed you. 9.1 intended air yards. Okay, so... Go deep, baby, is the motto, even in the snow. This is not good football. The, pre the, the pressure is literally, mentally and physically, always on Allen to do everything. I'm going to go and show you what this guy, I hear talk about him being this or that. Now, this guy is carrying the world on his shoulders more than anybody in this league just about and, and still holding it over his head. Now, Lamar was kind of that way, but you see him breaking down. This is just bad philosophical football, bad execution. You come out and you run that football, and you don't run stretches. I remember I saw somebody complain about how Cook didn't break it on a, a stretch, a draw run. Anybody who's running in the snow, you know that's a terrible call. You have no agility. Don't make cuts in the snow. The choices of to where to run the football was ridiculous. So I'm going to bring it back here to a next graphic, and you're going to see the league is figuring things out, not just on Allen, but the philosophy in Buffalo. So you see right here, it's all his careers from 2018 to 2020, and you look at the blitz count, 126, that's B-L-I-T-Z, uh, 126, 201, 244, that was the year he had his best season. And remember, they blitzed him like 30 or 40 times more than anybody else in the league. And he beat the blitz, had his best season. And what did they do? They came back the next year and decided to add more zone. Blitzes dropped 182. And, you know, I could dig into all this stuff and maybe I'll do it another day. But now, next season, the one that just passed, 2022, they went to even more zone. They literally blitzed them 100 less times than they did in 2020. And he had nine more sacks. Now, you could just simply say, that's on the offensive line. But that is short-sighted. That's narrow thinking. And it is, in effect, 
uh, a little true, obviously. You got to put it, but not totally. You got so many zones. You got guys dropping deep. You guys got knowing where you're going because they know you don't run the football. They've got the odds on when they call their plays where you're kind of going. And you go deep, which means you got to hold the football. And then you got the zones where these guys are covered. And so you're putting so much on Allen, and the pressure's getting there, and they're finding ways to mitigate what Allen and the Bills can do. And the way you break this, run the football. Guys want to drop uh, uh, six or seven into zone coverage. You crack a nice little run inside with the running back. You come on the center, in single eye back, and you get some runs, and that forces safeties and linebackers to creep up. They do the same thing with Tua. They know the play action is wasted. I showed last year so many times where Allen would go to play fake and the linebackers were already dropping. I said, who cares? You guys ain't going to run any of you do. Who cares? It's so easy to diagnose from the draw, and it's just really not going to happen too much. I'd rather just stop the pass. They did it to Tua, and they do it with Allen. So I want to move on to this graphic now, and this is where your running attack is is and how much Allen is a part of that. You can see 2002. Look at the rush yard attempts. 18, 89, 19, uh, 09, 109, 102. Dropped a little bit. Back up to 122 in 2021 and then 124 in 2022. This guy should be lowering his rush attempts and as he increases as a passer. But more and more... It's Allen or nothing, bail us out Allen type stuff, and the effect is getting diluted. And his kid is taking a beating. And understand, when you look at this, their rushing output, and I'll show you that later on, I'll get back in, uh, I'll show you another form, another graphic I have. He was 36% of the rushing output of the Bills in 2022 taking this awesome piece of machinery and putting it into the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the derby over there, the crash derby over there, is insane. Now, just look, think of yourself as a defensive coordinator. You don't care about the run game. You prepare for Allen running and the pass and deep pass, and that's really what you... If you call that, you're going to be right most of the time. Now, here's an holographic uh, team rush attempts. Bills were 16th. 26.4. Wonderful, right? No. Do you know, if you take Allen 7.2 per game, Tampa, Miami's here at 22.8 at 31, and Tampa is here at 22.1 and 8 and run football, and they sucked at it. You guys are at 19.4. You're worse than the 32nd team by a few spots. You'd probably be about 34th or 35th if you took Allen out of the equation. 22, 22nd in rush percentage. And then again, you minus out from it, you're like 34th. That's insane. You know how much advantage DC has understanding of what you guys are going to do? It's, it's like you just you, you allow them to prepare for certain things over and over and over again. And you don't adapt. At least Dable had these few quirky little plays that he would add and call in for Allen that would you know change things. But Dorsey's... Uh, calls for Allen are just so bland, so plain. Uh, and I'm not beating on Dorsey. He's a rookie. He has a chance to change. But it's clear. And I keep going with it. Now, NFL team time of possession percentage, 18th. Not great for a team that wants to go to Super Bowl. Now, or your defense is on the field a lot throughout the season. And that's where you get banged up a lot. But again, how much of this is gained through Allen getting the first downs? It's Allen or bust again. NFL team plays, not bad, 11th, but again, Allen's generating, uh, you know, probably base 16th to 17th without Allen, and still, that's not exactly what you want when you're a high-powered offense. If you're an offensive team, you want way more plays than that to keep your defense fresh and keep them over the field, but there's a lot of tight games and a lot of games where you get the big play and then a lot of three and outs, and that's not effective. You could do better than that. So... uh Completion percentage. Notice here, Miami 21st, and uh, uh, Buffalo 21st, and Miami 25th. Highly vertical offenses that are very predictable with no run game. It's hard to complete. It's the NFL. Nothing is free, baby. So now we keep going. Uh, uh, Bills, 
you can see right there's a graphic here. I put Miami there to show you that I'm not being a hater. I'm, it, I, I have these same gripes with my own team. So you hear Miami, bad throw percentage. Miami was uh, 10th at 17.6, most bad percentage. Uh, Houston was first, 21.9. Bills, 12th, 16.8. Again, highly vertical, highly predictable, no run game. And then here, you can see uh, on target percentage, um, Green Bay was one first with 80.6. He's coming into the league, into the division, guys. It's not going to be easy. And then Buffalo, 22nd, 73.3. Again, highly vertical, very predictable, no run game. Now, here we're last. Attended air yards, Vegas Raiders, Bills, and Dolphins. Top three, 9.2. Uh, for the Bills, and 9-0 for the Dolphins. That means your intention is highly vertical. The longer you hold the ball, the easier it is to get to the quarterback. The farther you throw the football, the harder it is to complete because it's distance, and then you have all the mitigations along the way, whether it's weather or players. This is why it's very difficult to be have high pass uh, completion percentage when you throw in such high volume vertical. Now, here's the last one I want you to look at. This is all the playoff teams. Uh, highest pass percentage to lowest pass percentage. And uh, the color coordinating, red means you got bounced out in the wild card. Orange, uh, the, the, the division round. Brown, the uh, conference round. And then green, you went to the Super Bowl. Now, clearly the Bills have 58.5. They're in the middle of the road. That's what it seems like. But if you take Allen out, then what do you have? And every time this guy runs, he gets hit. He gets tired. He, he's got to bear everything on his shoulders. So he, this looks good in, in just the, the numbers. But the actuality of it, again, it's Allen all or nothing. Now, I put black circles around the Bills, Giants, uh, Philly, and Baltimore because these are, are run games that are carried vastly by their quarterback. And you'll notice they all kind of have the same sort of ending. Now, Allen's at the top, 36%. Uh, and uh, Daniel Jones, 30%. You get those cheap yards, it's good. But come playoffs, it's not as good as it seems during the regular season. And then uh, Philly, Hurts, 30%. Remember, they didn't run the football in the Super Bowl with the running backs. They had uh, uh, Hurts running and passing, running and passing. And on the other side, they had Mahomes, they handed Pacheco, and they lost. And then uh, Lamar over in the Ravens, he had that great year or two, and then he got consumed by injuries, and he didn't make it either. This is not a successful formula. And Allen is an excellent human being. This team is an excellent team. He, Allen's an excellent quarterback, but the philosophy is not working. This is a defensive team that, that you need to let them rest. You need to give them plays off. You need to have some easy games, shorten the games. Run game does that. You need to take pressure off Allen, and the run game does it, but not through him, through the running backs. He needs breaks. He needs not to carry in and out. Game in and game out. But it's the vertical offense on top of that that makes it so different. This guy is so special to make these big plays over and over and over again with a porous offensive line and really no run game other than him. So shortening the concept, shortening, attacking multiple areas, is spreading the wealth, attacking deep, middle, center, and then the exterior short this creates uncertainty in the D.C. when they game plan. It creates uncertainty in the defensive players when they're watching the play. And when you get legit runs, say, Allen, when Allen's on the center and he hands off, it creates serious consternation of whether there, there's a handoff or not. If the back gets turned on the handoff. You know, you lose sight of the ball. In a shotgun, you can see the whole thing. Totally different. So... Problem is, Dorsey and Dable before him have just said more cowbell, and they keep bringing it, same thing over and over and over again. 
and the results kind of end up, yes, Alan could do amazing stuff, but clearly he's human. And so run diversity, adding more runs to the running back, look diversity on the center in shotgun, and then area of attack diversity, most notably shortening things up and only hitting it on of the right read is where the Bills need to go. And to me, you give Allen a legit run game and legit play action, and this guy is the scariest quarterback in the league. Let him run the football on occasion. When the defense bites on that run play side and he rolls backside and he has a, a, a double read, he can throw or run. Or you dial it up nice. But... This over-reliance is going to have the Bills miss the mark and Allen keep getting flack he does not deserve. I mean, I'm a Dolphins fan. I want my team to win. But I'm here to be an objective observer. I try to present my information. And it's not that difficult. Allen allows options, even with not the greatest offensive line. This is clearly why blocking... Uh, improvement, I still think tight end. Tight end is critical and right uh, tackle. Uh, tackles might not be available. I think it's the 27th, you guys, that late in the first. But there would be a guard. I got, I got there's some guys that are being talked about for you. I'm, I'm a little concerned for you. But the, you are still there. The window was its widest in the last two years. But with Allen, it's always open if you just get smart. I don't know. Keep watching for you guys. Uh, this draft is tremendous. It's going to be the place where you guys can improve. That blocking tight end, you could get a guy that like Washington, unbelievably, who could block like a lineman and then go out. If, if Washington goes to you guys, it's going to be a huge – I keep talking this guy up because I think he could be special on the right team. So offensive linemen and blockers, getting into a pass balance look – you guys can do it. Whole, just believe. This division's going to be tough, though. Rodgers, my Dolphins, you guys, and, and maybe the Patriots if they can get things out of wild over there. Uh, but this is not going to be the ride, easy, easiest ride it was prior. All the P's and Q's have to be taken care of for this season. But I think the Bills could be so tough with just a little adjustments. So anyway, Bills fans, I hope you enjoyed. I try to present all the information I could. Uh, I hope, hope you see that it, it's coming from a place of intellectual honesty and trying to provide some good information. Anyway, Curtis saying thanks for staying at the end. Catch you next time. Be well. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.